So week four of 11D week notes, week video, video, week notes, weekly video notes, whatever. Um, so last week we shipped the 11D dev server, which is the initiative to get rid of browser sync as part of the default install. Um, and the original reason we did that was to sort of solve some of the NPM audit logs that come back from uh, a very beginner experience when you very uh, first install 11D for the first time. Um, so yeah, we shipped that this week. Um, big news, it will be bundled by default with 11D 2.0, so you don't actually need to install anything separately. Um, all you got to do is use the new 2.0 Canary version that's out. Um, any issues with it, please file on this 11D dev server repo. Um, we've actually shipped a couple of new Canary releases of it uh, last week as part of very initial feedback. Uh, we also added it to the documentation. So if you go to the 11D docs, oops, and then you go out to watch and serve as part of the configuration section, there'll be a new section on 11D dev server, which shows all of the options um, and the default values that we provide out of the box. So if you want to configure the port, if you want to turn off the DOM diffing updates, the morph DOM library that we use to apply updates without reloads, without full page reloads, you can do that. Um, we have just like a global enabled toggle that lets you turn off live reload altogether. Um, how many times do you want to try port reassignment if one of those already exists? Whether or not you want to show your local network IP addresses. Um, if you want to do HTTP2 with HTTPS, you need a key and a certificate. Uh, and we have some a link to a package that will generate that for you. It just takes some manual work. Um, this folder option here controls where the special injected scripts uh, as part of the live reload end up. So you probably won't need to change this, but if you're somehow already using dot eleven D for something, um, you can update that. And then show version. Uh, so the eleven D core outputs the version number on the console by default. Uh, the core version number on the console by default, um, and that just helps with um, support burden. So when people file issues, we instantly know what uh, version they're on. And if you want the same thing for the 11D dev server, you can toggle this on. Um, I'll probably use it, but I don't think a lot of other people will, so um, that exists as an option to you. Um, and another great thing that came out of this, um, we reduced dependencies from 349 to 202. Core's node modules went from 80, almost 82 megabyte to 36 megabyte, which is great. Um, and then I did some benchmarks on NPM installs just on my local machine and it decreased it by almost 85%, which is awesome. Uh, and then again, we got rid of these NPM audits that come back when you very first install 11D. So you can try this out now. It's um, on 11D Core's Canary version. Uh, it'll be at 2.0.0 Canary 3. Um, I don't know why I'm updating the Twitter username to have the latest version, but that's what I'm doing right now. Um, so yeah, you can install it. We have 2.0.0 Canary 3. Uh, and look, look for more Canaries moving forward this week. Um, we also shipped a browser sync server plugin. So as part of this server work, uh, I did actually create a standard configuration API where other folks can create plugins for their own servers to use in 11D. And I created a very first example of that using Browser Sync. So you can actually replace 11D Dev Server with Browser Sync if you want to do that moving forward. Um, and that is on the original Watch and Serve documentation too. If you scroll down just a little bit, there's a section on swapping back to Browser Sync. Um, and then you can also configure the same Browser Sync options that we had previously uh, with the previous 1.0 and uh, APIs. So yeah, 11D Server Browser Sync. Um, another thing that happened, oh, I did want to go over a little bit more about the benchmarks, um, just to sort of drive this home. Like on my local machine, the blue here is the 1.0 install uh, with Browser Sync. 
and you can see it averaged about two to two and a half seconds on uh, new clean cold start installs um, and then the new canary version uh, it's less than half a second so npm npm installs are going to be very uh, quick uh, and i think it'll be great to see and here's just some screenshots of the previous console log output that came from an install with the 1.0 version and the new one has uh, this more standard uh, zero vulnerability output which we want um, and then this is how I measured the node modules uh, changes. This is the previous uh, previous version node modules about 82 megabyte. This is using a tool called Daisy Disk, um, which just analyzes your file system to show uh, yep different file sizes for different things. And then the new version has about 36. So low dashes are actually our biggest module right now. Um, so, yeah. All right, so I did want to do one quick demo before we move on. Um, with the work for the week, I want to show the new server API and how it works with Browser Sync. So here's just a normal NPM installed uh, Levity Canary, the new 2.0. So if I do start, which just runs Levity in serve mode, um, you can see it outputs the server a URL here with port 8080, which is the default. And if we want to switch to browser sync, the only thing we need to do is uh, we'll need to up, uh, install this module, obviously, but uh, the only thing you need to do is set this module property and set server options, which is the same um, API we used to configure 11 Dev Server previously. And then you could see it actually reloaded the server hot reloaded the server with uh, the new browser sync instance. And so now we have a live like a live browser sync server running. Um, and if we want to switch back, we just comment that out. And it switches back to the 11D dev server. And so I did want to just show um, how you could actually have a hot loaded web server running in 11D as well. I know we've had some bugs with um, servers reloading in the past where you had to sort of stop and start the server and if you see any of those moving forward definitely report them I consider them to be uh, bugs and we want to squash those as much as possible but I think this is a really cool demo that shows that without having to restart your 11 instance at all we can actually hot swap uh, the entire server which is I think really kind of cool and if you change any options and set server options it will do the same behavior um, and so this one right here is just the default one um, but if we want to switch back to browser sync we can do that and switch back again I did want to do just one more thing uh, I did a quick demo of a new 11d Vite server so um, here is the 11d server Vite uh, server using the new 11d serve API um, and you can see down here, now we have a Vite server running in localhost, um, port 8080. So it does kill the previous server, so you can reuse the new port. Um, and so yeah, look for that server uh, plugin to be published here this week uh, to give us a, a first class plugin for Vite in 11 which I think is pretty cool. Um, and we can hot swap back, turn it off. Now we have the the old, not the old, but the uh, stock 11D dev server running, um, which is the simple property update. So I did want to give one more update about uh, an episode of the changelog that's going to be formally published this week. Um, but yeah, I was on the changelog last week to talk about the full-time 11D. Um, and Netlify sponsorship there. Um, so if you want to check that out, it is on our YouTube. I linked it up from our YouTube channel, um, the sort of pre-release raw uncut version of that. Um, so you can check that out on YouTube or you can wait for the um, very pristine, professionally produced version of the podcast to come out this week. I did have a question come in this week from Chris Samuel 
Um, and if y'all ever have questions that you want me to talk about on these weekly updates, feel free to post those to me on Twitter, um, and I'll try to answer them. Um, he he asked, is there a, a reference somewhere that explains the meaning behind the name 11D? And I did actually talk about this on the changelog uh, last week. And there are a bunch of different like sort of influences that, that it came from, but the big origin for me was a story that my grandma used to tell about how I was learning to count. Um, and I would count one, two, three, blah, blah, blah. And I would get to 10, and then I would go 10, 11, D, 12, D, 13, 14. And that was just highlighting an inconsistency in how English worked with those numbers. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a, uh, an old story from my grandma. Um, and yeah, that's the origin of it. Um, so if you have any other questions about 11D or just anything, really, you can post them to me on Twitter and I'll try to answer those. All right. Thanks, y'all.